what what is particularly striking to me about her is the way she breaks down and emphasizes her messages to one's understanding. She just breaks it down, and you have no doubt as to what uh, uh, um, um, God is saying to you. Trust me, after today, you will not forget the message in a very long time. Recently, also, I was having lunch with a former colleague and I had mentioned this program to her and the guest speaker for the event. My colleague lit up and was so excited. She wanted me to invite her also to attend. I'm sure she's on the call now. And she was so excited because of the grace and the insight and the fresh perspective that flows anytime Pastor Eloho teaches. There's so much more to say about this woman, but let me just drop it here for now and give Pastor T the honors to do the formal introductions. Thank you. Pastor Hallelujah. T. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, um, Sister Gloria, well said. Uh, one of the things that is very <clears throat> important for me when we consider this platform, let me just remind us of what this platform is about. This is Watchers Connect. And it's the platform for career and business people, um, for those who are already a part of the family of the Watchers Prayer Ministry or anybody who is a career person or a business person and who is in the kingdom. It's very important that we are trained and tutored in what it means to be a career or business kingdom person. We have this advantage that we have the Holy Spirit, that we have the mind of Christ. And our goal through this platform is to invite people who would be able to constantly bring that mind of Christ to us so that we can excel in our different places and spaces. Remember the scripture says that according to Deuteronomy 8, 18, that it is God who gives us the power to get wealth for the establishment of his covenant here on earth. God is interested in you and I succeeding in our business, succeeding anywhere we go. And today we have the privilege of having a woman of God blessed who is also a kingdom person. She is in the workspace. And I'll just introduce her in a bit. <clears throat> so we're talking about people who are practical, people who are actually out there, not um, theor theory, theory, what do you call it? It's not theory. It's based on practice. And I trust God. We're, we're so persuaded that she is meant to minister to us at such a time as this. Let me introduce Pastor Aloha. Aloha Chukuma. P.E., as she's fondly called, is a very excited daughter of God with a teaching gift that she's excited to share with all. She is graced with insight and wisdom and is a delight to engage with. Amen. Through the years, she has depended, she has deepened her roots with God and has been known to always have a fresh word from God for all seasons. Her life can easily be described as a testimony of the stupendous grace of God and everyone who comes in contact with her as an opportunity to tap into that grace as well as the wellspring of wisdom God has graced her with. Watches Connect family. Let's put our hands together, your, um, your emoji hands, and let's receive today Pastor Aloha. Pastor Aloha, you're welcome. We're very glad that you have graced us with your presence. Welcome. Thank you very much, Pastor T. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, Sister Gloria. I just wanted to be sure that you can all hear me. Pastor T, can you hear me clearly? We can hear you very well. Thank you. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you, Sister Grace. That's exciting. I can see all the hands. Thank you, Sister Gloria. Thank you, everyone. Um, it's such an honor to be here, and I trust the Holy Spirit is here already. Thank you, Sister Chi. Thank you, Sister Ramide. Thank you so much. I feel very warmly welcome. And I know that God already had a word in stop for us, and I'm going to dive straight in, and then we're going to spend some time praying. Um, Holy Spirit, we thank you tonight. We yield ourselves to you. Your word says 
that the influence of the word brings light, it brings illumination, it brings direction, and it gives guidance to the simple. And so Holy Spirit of God will bring this picture. It appears like it's very common. It appears like we're very all the time. But we yield ourselves to you. We ask Holy Spirit of God that you give me a word for everyone. Let the word be split in as many ways as it needs to go for everyone under the sound of my voice. I ask in the name of Jesus that you will speak your word in a bespoke manner, that everyone that hears this word will know indeed that you were in this place and they knew it. Thank you, Amen. Father, for the good name we have prayed. Amen. 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 So, 10 minutes in, and so we're going straight into the word. Um, so thank you so much, um, Auntie Gloria. That was such a warm warm introduction, and I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to help me um, deliver on that. We are placing the demand of the calling of God on my life, and I'm trusting that the Lord will help me. Today, we're going to be talking about such a time, such a time. That was the scripture. I'm going to put it in the book of Esther chapter 4, the 14, and in her phrasing, it, it was where um, Mordecai was saying to Esther, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I would like to start first because when we look at the scriptures many times, I like to take the context from the preceding verse. Um, and, and I want us to go a little backwards to who Esther was. If you go to the book of Esther, chapter 2, verse 7, the Bible introduces Esther and just says that Esther was with her uncle. So, in terms of identity, Esther had no pedigree to write so far about. She was an orphan in a strange land. Everything that could have been stacked against her was stacked against her, apart from the fact that she had a physical comeliness. So the Bible records that she was beautiful and she was shapely. But then besides that, she was in a foreign land. All of those would not have mattered. However, she had one thing. She had an uncle. The Bible records that his name is Mordecai. I'm starting from there because the Holy Spirit wanted me to start tonight by speaking very conservative, very, not conservatively, very generously to the concept of identity. I think that that's one thing that the devil has placed his hand on and placed his chokehold on as believers. There's such a sense in which either we don't quite understand who we are or we don't quite understand that even when we don't appear to have what the world considers to be favorable, we have the only thing we need in our corner, which is a Mordecai. If you read through the scriptures, Mordecai is a type of the Holy Spirit. Because in the life of Esther, as we begin to look at the scriptures, you will see that when you look at John chapter 14 and speak about all the things the Holy Spirit was supposed to do, those were the kind of things that Mordecai did in Esther's life. I want to speak to someone here who feels, I'm in the business space, but I don't feel like I have a secret. You know, when you ask, what's my superpower? I don't think I have a superpower yet. I don't think I am all of that. I'm not sure that I'm anything to write home about. And maybe you are standing like an Esther in the middle of what we call a strange land. I want to remind you tonight that there's nothing ordinary about your life. <laughs> you are standing with a Mordecai in the place of the Holy Spirit. And that's what makes a difference. The fact that you were not born without a calling. And so when I start tonight, the, the Esther story is kind of God saying, I want you to position yourself wherever. If you are Esther before she goes to the palace, God has a word for you. If you are Esther in the palace right now, God does have a word for you. If you are Esther in the place of trying to make up a decision as to how do I stay in this place of position and how do I come into the place of prominence and how do I create a pattern, God has a word for you. But I'm starting first by attacking that lie of the enemy. There is nothing ordinary about your life. There's nothing ordinary about the way you were made. There's nothing ordinary about the gifts that you carry. There's nothing ordinary about even the things that you do not consider to be things that you like. You know why? Because the Bible already tells us very clearly, except we do not understand or believe what God says. He says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. <laughs> and we know that God is a purposeful God. Listen to me, child of God. The devil wants you to feel that you are ordinary like Esther. <laughs> but you see, you have a Holy Spirit beside you that is going to magnify all the things that God has placed strategically in your life to prosper. And so I'm starting first with the place of identity. I want you to tell yourself, there's nothing ordinary about my life. There's nothing ordinary about my journey. There's nothing ordinary about where I'm going to. There's nothing ordinary about the journey that God has had me take. And you know, when the Bible says that God causes all things to work together for our good, I've come to realize that that means that we yield authorship to God. <laughs> And so it means that the things that bring glory to God in your life may not be necessarily things that you like. I'm speaking to someone that feels like I don't have any highlights to celebrate. I don't have any amazing things to be proud of. Maybe right now you don't feel like you're at the top of your career. 
You don't feel like your business is doing so well. You are not top 40 by 40 or top 50 by 50. <laughs> but you see, child of God, listen to me. There's something that God does when the Bible says that he has his way in the well wind and in the storm. And what that means to me is that even when you do not see it, God is working out a purpose. Sometimes for your life, God just wants to redeem your pain. So you find somebody else and you're able to tell the person, see what God brought me through. And for that reason, the person is redeemed. And it doesn't feel like, oh my God, that was such a big deal. But somebody else is able to run ahead because of your experience. So I'm starting first with your identity. I want to kick away that lie of the enemy. You are not ordinary. Your life is not nondescript. Your life is powerful. And I'm going to show you as we look at the story of Esther tonight, before we begin to pray, why I'm very certain that your life is not ordinary. Why I'm very certain that God has a plan. Why I'm very certain that your identity is the key to working in this place of such a time as this. When I was coming tonight, I was asking the Holy Spirit, what do I tell your daughters? And what do I say? This story of Esther is very popular. Everybody kind of knows it. And it said to me to teach you guys about the four Ps. And I'm going to go into the four Ps now. So the first thing I'll start with, and just before I go there, I'll go back to such a time. Such a time. Three words, such a time. Such a time as this. So at that, in that context, Mordecai was saying to Esther, Esther, where you are positionally, where you are in this moment was preordained. There's something about it that requires you. You are here for such a time as this. I'll start first with the concept of time. And you know, I know that when the Old Testament was written, you know, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. Um, and so if you look at the, the concordance and you look at that word time, it's not going to show you anything particularly exciting. But you know, later on, when they started to write the Bible, after they're written the New Testament, there's what we call the Septuagint, Gate, and they were rewriting the scriptures. And they took that word time because of what it meant in that context. And it's translated now to mean Kairos. Kairos is a word that denotes a season that is pregnant with promise, literally like a prophetically charged moment. In this context, Mordecai was saying to Esther, Esther, you were not born for nothing. You were born for a prophetically charged moment. Child of God, listen to me. There's a prophecy that has gone ahead of you that you are walking in even when you do not realize it. One of the big things that the devil does to us today as believers, he makes us chase this thing called purpose as though it's something that we have to force. Now, one day I was struggling with it and asking God, what am I supposed to be doing? And God said to me, Eloho, you know what? Can you start with daily obedience? Can you start with yielding yourself to me in daily obedience? Let's start there. When we start with daily obedience, we look in retrospect and we see the pattern of God. We see the handwriting of God. I want to speak to someone that is in a constant journey of trying to make it fit in the present. Child of God, you see, God is not only the best writer of stories, he's the best editor. So what God does is that even when you make mistakes, and so that's why the Bible says everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, all things, God edits them to make them to work together because there's a prophecy that's gone ahead of you. There's a prophetically charged word that is delivering you into your kairos. So when I speak tonight, I want to speak to that heart of yours. I want to speak to your mind. I want to speak to your soul. I want to remind you that in the workplace, you have a call and you have a plan. And God is working out that plan for you. So I'll start with the first piece. God wanted me to speak to us tonight about purpose. And I started by saying that I don't want to. Okay, so please let me stop. Is everybody following? Am I speaking too quickly? Please let me know. Um, I just want to be sure that everybody's here. So if you can just do a thumbs up and say hello over here. Yes. Um, We're here. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay. So I can see that. Yeah. So thank you, Bureau. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. So I'll start first with purpose. Tonight, I want to speak to that person that feels like they're in obscurity. That feels like nobody recognizes me. Nobody sees me. I don't feel like I'm in purpose. I don't feel celebrated. I don't feel like I have a special space. You know, when you find people that are working in purpose, it feels like there's a special niche for them. Everybody just kind of recognizes it. And God wanted me to say to you tonight that before purpose comes, sometimes there's the darkness of obscurity and obscurity can be a gift. Because sometimes God gives us the gift of obscurity so that we can grow, so we can come into a place of stature. So in your workplace, maybe you're worried, on your business, you're worried about the fact that it just feels like this promotion has eluded you. But the purpose of God has not, because the purpose of God is delivered in and out of time. 
When Esther started her journey, I started by identity. You know, she didn't have an eventful beginning. The Bible just says that Mordecai brought Esther up, you know, as her uncle. She didn't have a father. She didn't have a mother. You think about being in a strange land as a slave without your parents to cover you. You know, it was a tough beginning for her, but she had this uncle called Mordecai. And you know, God wanted me to remind us that it's not just you that is an obscurity child of God. God hid away Joseph. God hid away David. In fact, for David, he had been anointed as king, but he had to sit in the palace, but he was still not in position. And so maybe for you, God has given you this very, very exciting word about where he's taking you to. And it seems like you're in a slow season. I'm speaking to that person that feels like, why is it taking so long to get to the promise that I have seen? And God is saying to me, my obscurity is a blessing. I am growing you into stature. My purpose is speaking. My purpose is speaking. I'm going to pray because I sense that some of us are staying in a place of despondency because of how we're seeing the things we're in. We're not seeing it as though it's a sin of grooming. We're seeing it as though God has failed because we're not coming into we are not coming to the line like this. And God is saying, I'm covering you by obscurity so that I can groom you. So the first thing that God gave me to give us in terms of the peace, the first one is purpose. If it was a physical class, I would say, everybody say purpose. And I started by saying that purpose in this context is because the Bible already says to us in Jeremiah chapter one, verse five, that he had already created a purpose for us before we were even born. Well, you know, the scripture that makes me most excited is when I look at Psalm 139. And the Bible says that all our days are before God. Daughter of God, your days are before God, meaning that God is curating your story. And that means that there's a purpose to your pain. There's a purpose to your joy. There's a purpose to what seems to be a delay. I want to speak to someone that is dealing with a delay. The Holy Spirit just gave me a word for you. And I, I, I was thinking about the story of Elizabeth and Zechariah some, some weeks ago. And the Holy Spirit was saying to me, what Israel called a delay? You know, they looked at their lives and said, these ones are of the lineage of, of the Levitical order. They had no child to pass on their lineage to at that point. And the Holy Spirit said to me, what men called a delay was me testifying of faithfulness. God was looking for a man and a woman that he could commit the charge of giving birth to the foreigner. And then the world saw it as they were barren, even though they're devout. It just felt like it was a contradiction. But God was saying, these ones I can trust. And I'm speaking to someone under the sound of my voice that feels like I have trusted God for so long and it doesn't make sense what I'm going through. I don't understand why I'm going through what I'm going through. I know I'm segueing a bit, but this is for you. And then God wants me to say to you that the, the things he allows you to go through are a reflection of his trust in your capacity because he's working through you. So you see, don't take on the definition of the world. Don't assume that things are not going well with you because everybody assumes that success is a particular thing. God says, I, I delight in you and I am trusting you. I want you to know that. I want you to know that your life is not defined by the success milestones of the world. Your life is defined by the purpose that God has given to you. If John the Baptist lived and he had no children, he never became a priest. And the Bible says there's no one greater than John the Baptist. Child of God, as long as you're living in purpose, God is pleased. God is pleased with you, whether you get feedback for it or not. So let me go back to the place of purpose. Like Esther, I want you to know that your purpose is in that your obedience. If you are a bit confused about what you're supposed to be doing, what career path should I follow? Um, everybody's going into tech now. Everybody's launching new businesses. Everybody's relocating. Um, I'm not sure what decision to make. It's very tough in Nigeria right now to run a business. Feels like I should just shut down. God is saying to me to tell you that your purpose is in your daily obedience. Can you just listen? Today, Lord, what are you saying? Obey. Tomorrow, Lord, what are you saying? You'll find out that you will have such peace, but you also have such clarity. So the first word God gave me for us tonight is purpose. That's the first piece. Purpose. I hope everybody's here. So we started with identity first. And I started there because the only way we can come into the place where the Kairos word is a word that pertains to us is where we realize that the word was delivered to us because of our dest our DNA. So you see, when we speak about the heritage and the purpose of God, there's a definition that God has in mind. <laughs> God's definition says that because you are my son, you are not struggling to please me. I am the one that works in you, both to will and to do what pleases you. I'll tell you a very simple example. My younger sister, when we were much younger, she used to walk on her toes. So she used to tiptoe and, and then she grew out of it. And then many years later, she had a child abroad and the child was now tiptoeing and the doctors were worried that the child had a developmental disorder. 
And so when my mom went to visit, she said, no, there's nothing wrong with this child. This is hereditary, she'll be fine. There's someone here that's listening to me and you're struggling. It feels like you're struggling to do the will of God. You're struggling, like you're writing out a list of what God will have you do. God is telling me to tell you to have peace and to recline back and rest in him. Because when you rest in him, in that your daily obedience, you no longer struggle. There's a nature of God, like Pastor T was saying, we have the mind of Christ. But we need to move away from that place where we are constantly doing to please God to the place where we rely on being. Because when we act, we please God. And so when we come to the place where we talk about the Kairos moment and all the things that God is demanding from us in the workplace and God is demanding from us on the top of the mountains, I want to remove the pressure that the enemy has placed that makes it feel like we are joining alone. You're not joining alone on the journey of purpose. There is a spirit of, at work in you. There's the breath of the almighty that gives understanding. So I want to also bring you back to the place where your purpose is you in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Remember I said that Mordecai was a type of the Holy Spirit. He was the one, it was his job to fan Esther. It was his job to affirm Esther. It was his job to position Esther. It was his job to look for where Esther ought to flourish. And so it was him that said, Esther, there's this competition going on, go there. If you read later on, you will notice that he kept watching out for Esther. Child of God, in that office, you're not joining alone. God has put, in, in fact, sometimes even in men that you do not even know, know him, God has put people in the room to speak up for you. In that business, God is able to wake up a king and tell him, you will not sleep because of Kemi today. I need you to call her in the morning. So we're going to reorganize our minds and move from that place where we feel like we're joining alone and struggling alone. We are in partnership with the Holy Spirit that has all intelligence. I don't know if you have thought about it before. When you watch American movies, they make a very big deal of how their secret service works, of how once they put your name in some computer, they can find everything about you. Listen to me, child of God. That Holy Spirit that you carry, <laughs> that Holy Spirit you carry knows what the bid for that contract is going to be. He will help you. That Holy Spirit that you carry knows exactly who you ought to hire. That Holy Spirit that you carry knows exactly who needs to speak for you in a room. He knows the ideas that you need. And so you see, we are walking in a place where we should carry our shoulders up. Why? Because we have access to supernatural intelligence. So not only do we have, by the spirit of God, a sense of sonship, we have in the workplace a sense of power. So we have an authority that comes from who we know. And so when I come back to the place of purpose, when you come into that place of partnership, then you realize that, okay, so this purpose is not just about me. It's about God. God has a purpose to fulfill. Listen to me, purpose is important to God. The reason I'm saying that is because God has no jurisdiction. The Bible says that God gave the earth to the sons of men. He gave the earth to us. And so it means that anything that God wants to do on this earth, he's going to have to breathe into Pastor T. He's going to breathe into Auntie Gloria. He's going to breathe into Sister Kemi. He's going to breathe into FIDC. He's going to breathe into Sister Abiyano Jew and say, go and do my work on the earth. And so every time we shrink, and every time we refuse to own this place, then we make God smaller than he is. You know, one day the Holy Spirit was saying to me, every time you yield to me, you give somebody an, an opportunity to know that I exist. I'll tell a small testimony and I'm checking the time. Some years ago, I went to Ebano in the morning. Ebano is a shop in Lagos. For those of us that are dialing from outside of Lagos or in the diaspora, it's a, a max mat, so it's like a relatively big store. It was quite early on a Saturday. And when I got to the stall, I had finished buying my provisions. And then for some reason, there are um, POS points. The portal was very working. So I had to go back to the ATM to get some money. As I got to the ATM, I saw a, there was a lady crouched at the bottom of the ATM. And I sensed in my spirit that the Lord wanted me to give her some money. But it wasn't a round figure. So it wasn't 2,000 Naira. It was, I think, 1,800. So I grabbed some money from the ATM and went to my car. I had some change, put the money together and went and I tapped the person and gave the money to her. And I, I didn't know it was a female at the time because the person was covered. And as I gave the money to her, she grabbed my arm. No, she grabbed my, 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 my limb and she started to cry. And she said, oh, that she had been out of house. I think she got born again and her family wasn't Christian and they kicked her out of the house with her baby. And she had been staying in the shanty. And the previous day, she walked into the shop and she wanted to buy some baby milk. And she just checked the price and she had said to God, please, I don't mind for myself. Can you send me some money so I can buy some 
some formula for my baby. And guess how much the formula was? 1,800 naira. Well, whatever amount it was at that time. And, and I'm speaking to someone here about purpose in your office, purpose in the workplace like Esther. God is saying, when you come into partnership with my spirit, you become a God man. What that means is that you become a representative of me on that mountain that you're dealing. So you bring a supernatural perspective to the culture of the earth. So when they say in the office that you cannot get by without, without gossiping or without leaking um, people's behinds or you need to play politics, God says, I will show you a higher and a better way. And he gives you favor and he gives you wisdom. He superimposes his culture and culture of the organization and he makes you try. I'm just saying to you, child of God, that when we come into this place where purpose is a journey of daily obedience, we also give men an opportunity to know that God exists. So number one, purpose. I hope everyone got it. I started with identity. Holy Spirit, help me. And I went on to purpose. And I started by speaking to the story of Esther and how that Esther did not look like she had any purpose at the time she started. When you look at her story, there was nothing worth reckoning with. She was just beautiful. But imagine beauty in the wrong hands. Imagine beauty if she didn't have the uncle called Mordecai. Imagine beauty if she didn't have the help. And that's why I'm telling you that you should never come to the place where you say my skills have brought me this far. You should never come to the place where you believe that it's because of something you have done. You want to realize that like Esther, the Holy Spirit complements what he has given you as a natural aptitude and he's positioning you for his purpose. So Esther had natural, natural aptitude. She had a natural complement of beauty, but that's not what took her into the palace. What took her into the palace was the fact that, well, one, she was helped by Mordecai, but secondly, she was favored. If you read about her story in the, in the palace, God raised helpers and she yielded to helpers. I don't know who's hearing me, but God is sending helpers and you need to open your heart. I don't know, some of us have been hurt so badly. So we are hurting. And we are not letting community in. We are not letting people into our spaces. We are not opening up to people. God is not going to come miraculously and recommend you for promotion. He's going to use people. God is not going to recommend your business. He can do it in a dream. I've seen him do it. But many times God uses people. And so if you're the person hearing me that has been hot, I know I hear it very clearly. Someone here has been very hot in church. You have, you have bad experiences from, from a very bad church relationship. It was very toxic. And it has kept you from opening up and God is saying to me to tell you that you should give him your ashes so he can give you beauty. He wants you to let go because there's a beauty that comes from the community and that's one of the things we can learn from Esther. In the palace and outside of it, she had Mordecai, she had people. And so when we come into the place where we realize that God prepares you before the time even comes, he's saying he's preparing you for the time but he's using people and you must let people in. You must descend right and know who you must let into your space. The next thing God wanted me to speak about is that when he brings you out of that obscurity, he brings you into the place of position. Everybody say position. All right, I'll pause now. Is everybody following? Can everybody hear me? Is everybody understanding? I started from identity and I spoke about purpose. I spent some time sharing about purpose not to be something that you're chasing. Purpose is something that you're allowing God to work out in you by your daily obedience. Purpose is a place where you're in partnership with the Holy Spirit as the author of all intelligence. Purpose is a place where you are yielding what your physical or natural attributes are to be optimized by the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying God does not want you to shrink. So please don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging that you're blessed. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging that you are an amazing speaker. You're an amazing author. You are a fantastic cook. You are a great mom. However, what God wants us to do in purpose is to partner with him so that there's a supernatural advantage that comes to whatever he has given you physically, like he was with Esther. The next thing I'm speaking about is position. So when, for the person that I spoke to, that feels like you're in obscurity, as God frames you, what he does is God wants to reap our character. And I know that's a place that we don't often like. But you see, child of God, because God wants to make us like him, God sometimes will take you through things that are not good for you. They are not good to you, but they are good for you. So maybe you are going through a journey and it feels like you are being stretched or you are learning to trust. You are going through a journey where you have more questions and you have answers and it feels like your life is a contradiction. And God is saying, I am the author of this story, trust me. And so I'm speaking to someone under the sound of my voice and I'm saying to you, listen to me, child of God, what you consider an obscure situation is God most times preserving you and preparing you 
And when he brings you to the place of preparation, he brings you into position. And when you come into position, you find out that you have been prepared before you even knew that you needed it. When Esther came into the palace, she was prepared. She was prepared, child of God. I want you to recognize that there's nothing about your life that was not planned. Your home, the birth order of your children, the way you entered the organization, the way you relocated if you did. Maybe you're not just where you are or what you are not doing what you thought you'd be doing. Because you are in partnership with God, remember we spoke about it from the place of identity to purpose. You need to trust that even where you may have made a mistake, the Bible says God works everything now together. He's editing, he's erasing, he's aligning you, he's recalibrating your journey. So let's start there. You're in position. Now, when God puts you in a position, it's for a reason. And I'm going to ask you tonight, I'm going to pray that the Lord will give us wisdom, discernment to be able to identify it. In Esther chapter 4, verse 13, I'm reading again. The Bible says, Mordecai told them to answer Esther. Do not think in your hearts that you will escape the king's palace any more than all the Jews. <laughs> for if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, where you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I spoke about it before because I spoke about Kairos moment. It's an opportune time, but it's an opportune time to do something. It's an opportune time to be something. It's an opportune time to say something. Too many times as children of God, we hide away and we do not take responsibility. So we're in position, but it feels like we're not there. You're there, but you're not even, you're not, you're not effective. You're not efficient. There's no reason why you should be in the workplace and you're not excellent at what you do. If there's a gap, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Holy Spirit, you know, one time I, I, I moved roles and I was kind of struggling with the role. I knew I had got to move roles, but it felt like I came into a new role where I, I wasn't sure how I was going to shine. And the Holy Spirit said to me, I am going to help you manage your bosses. I'm going to teach you what they want. And I'm saying to you, child of God, when you come into position because you recognize purpose, you can ask the Holy Spirit, what will you have me say and do here? God does not want you in position and then you now become like a silent partner. No contribution, no movement, no motion, no. The Bible says that Esther was acknowledged. The reason that Mordecai said that to her was because she had to speak. Being in the palace was not enough. He said, if you stay silent. I remember before this conversation, Esther had excuses. She said, ah, you know that the king has not sent for me. You know that you can't go before the king if he doesn't send for you. The, the penalty is death. It was like, it's such a big thing you're asking of me. And then Mordecai is saying, Madam, whatever the price, if you do not speak, God will raise someone else. You know, Esther had to realize that her position was not a privilege to be enjoyed, but a responsibility to be used to save others. I'm speaking to you today. You may not feel like you are in anything like a position. But God is saying every position he keeps you in is a responsibility to others. He wants you to open up so that you can bless others. It may be that young girl in your office that needs mentorship. It may be that your domestic assistant that needs some guidance. But every position God places you in, there's a kairos around it. There's something that God is requesting of that position because it's not in vain. The third thing I'm going to speak about, I hope they're all fine. So we started with, with the concept of identity. I spoke about purpose, now I spoke about position. And I spoke about purpose and position because I wanted you to know that even when you are in obscurity, you are in purpose. Even when you don't see the pattern yet, once you're in obedience, you're in purpose. Don't allow the enemy rid you of your joy. I want you to be at peace, like a calm pot. Just know that God is working out a purpose in your life. He's fitting it into a plan, all right? And I'm speaking about obedience and the perspective that comes through it. When you think about Esther, she talked about all the pluses and minuses. What could happen? What could go wrong? <laughs> and then the Bible says in verse 15 to 17, she said to Mordecai, go and gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me and do not eat or drink for three days. My maids and I will fast likewise. The Holy Spirit was saying to me, when you stay in the place of position, one of the things that God blesses you with is that he blesses you with influence. When you stay in the place of position, God blesses you with influence. What that means is that you become, you realize that your word has weight. <laughs> there's a weightiness to what you say. There's, there's a sense of gravitas, like God begins to honor you. And so people begin to reckon with you. It may not feel like a big deal, 
but you realize that once you stay in purpose and you accept a position so that even if it's not what you like, so maybe you have not been promoted in a couple of years, but the Holy Spirit is saying, I want you there. You must stay there and stay until your life begins to become a river of a living spring of life so that people know that, I don't know what it is, but every time I speak to Fumi, she just has such a calming effect. Every time she prays with me, God always answers. Listen to me, child of God. Your purpose in the workplace is to prosper. Your purpose also is to make Jesus known. And so as you make Jesus known, he now has an obligation to bless you. You know why? Because God says, let your light so shine that men will glorify me. They may not tell you. You may never hear the testimonies. But once you stay in position, God brings you into a place of influence. And it was that influence that Esther used to send a reply to her uncle. And she said, go and gather all the Jews. Go and gather all of them that are present in Shushan and let them pass. So when I move away from the place of purpose and I stay in position, I realize that for me to come into the place where I'm staying in a time, I'm responding rightly to the things that happen around me. Remember, Esther did not know what's happening outside the palace until Mordecai came to tell her. I know that there's so much happening in the world around us. People have never been as confused. In fact, when you think about the 2023 election and you think about the options that we have and you think about what could go wrong in Nigeria, for instance, you think about how it affects your family here, how it affects you even in diaspora, you know that we need the mercy of God. And so in that context, you're thinking, okay, God, what should I be doing? God is saying, stay in position and then I will give you influence. And what influence does is that it now gives you a weight in your industry. It gives you a weight in your community. It gives you a weightedness in your family. It gives you a weight in that small, that mountain of influence that God has called you to. Your voice now has a gravitas because you have stayed in position. But then when you come into position, God wanted me to speak to us tonight about that. And that's when we, we are going to begin to pray. I thought about the fact that when Esther was in the palace, the maids that she took to pray with her at first, they were not Jewish. But somehow over the time that she had been queen over them, she had come into a place where she had such influence that they went on a three-day fast because their, their Lord said so. I'm speaking to you tonight. And I'm saying to us that to come into the place where we can own the time, own the kairos, we must also realize that there's a pattern. And there's a pattern of prayer. There's a pattern of prayer. There's a pattern we must engage in the spirit. When I think about engaging on the pattern, the Holy Spirit showed me a picture. It was a reminder of the picture of Moses on the mountain. The Bible says we're going to fight against the Amalekites. And every time Moses stood on the mountaintop, when he raised up his hands, Israel was prevailing. And when he put his hands down, they were failing. And God was saying to me, for you to succeed in the valley of life, you must have a throne with me on the mountain of your altar. And so for us to engage in such a time as this, we must understand identity. We must come into the place of hope. We must recognize that from identity, God is going to send us help. Physical helpers, spiritual helpers, he's going to send us mentors, he's going to send us help. We are only able to descend correctly when we understand hope and we walk in daily obedience. Sometimes, like Moses' father-in-law, the people that God sends to you to give you counsel may not be believers. They may not be, they may not have the Holy Spirit in the way you think it is, but you have the wisdom to recognize that this is God speaking to me in this season. It may be a child. It can be anything, but God is saying, when you come from identity to purpose, you are able to discern my voice for season. And then as you come into that purpose, you sit firmly in position where you recognize that you have a spiritual advantage. You are not a mere man. You are not a mere woman. You are not working with only your sense knowledge. You have the backing of heaven. You have the backing of heaven. And for that reason, you come into a place of influence. So what that means is that you can declare in the heaven that is done on the earth. I remember once I was having a challenge in the office and I was driving home that evening and the Holy Spirit just brought a scripture. It was literally like he lifted it to me. And the scripture was from the book of First Thessalonians. And it says, it's a righteous thing for God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble me. And I just started to pray, Lord, it's a righteous thing to recompense tribulation that trouble to them that trouble me. I prayed all the way to like maybe for a few minutes and then I, I, I forgot about it. A few days later, you know, the, the, there was someone that was just a very was a pain and it was a pain for my role. It was a pain and the Holy Spirit removed him. I didn't have to complain to anybody. Listen to me. I don't know what lies the enemy has told you, but God is very interested in you prospering in your office. He's interested in you prospering in your business. He's interested in you doing well on your job, in your career. He's interested in you getting the mark of excellence. 
He's interested in you being the very best. So let's deal with that life from the pits of hell. God does not want you to be in obscurity except for a season when he's strengthening you and he will give you joy. All right. I'm speaking about the pattern because we're going to begin to pray. When you look at how Esther was able to engage her, Esther realized that, yes, I'm here for such a time as like this, but my voice alone cannot be heard. My beauty alone cannot win. My smart alone cannot win. Yes, I know how to say the right things. I know how to write the best memos. It cannot win. I've done the best business plan, but that cannot win. The only way I'm able to win before the king in the physical is because I've taken authority by the pattern of prayer. And so the way that we win, the way that we take up this time and respond correctly is because we pray. And because prayer is communication with God and we are hearing back, we know, should, do I move? Do I stay? Do I relocate? Do I move with my family? Do I leave my husband here? Do I leave my children there? Do I move my, my kid? Do I start a new business? All of that comes from the place of the pattern. So child of God, what God gave me to share with us tonight is some encouragement and then we'll pray for a few minutes. First is that he wants you to be certain there's nothing that is out of place in your life. Your identity is fixed in the mind of God. God is not in doubt who you are. You are a child of God. By his DNA, you have the very nature of God. All you need to do is to tune into God by obedience and sacrifice. It takes in sacrifice to build intimacy with God. And you need that intimacy with God to walk in the pattern. So number one, identity. Remember that as Esther, you may not have anything to write home about in your natural sense. And even when you do, you have the Holy Spirit to affirm it. You have the Holy Spirit to enlarge it. You have the Holy Spirit to position you as the Mordecai did Esther. The next thing I spoke about purpose, about a journey of daily obedience. I want to encourage you, as you walk in daily obedience, you find your journey become smoother. You find out that God is leading you into what he has planned for you from before the foundation of the world. I spoke about positioning and said that when you stay in that obedience, like Esther did, Esther realized, okay, I've come for such a time as this. It's time to obey whatever it takes. That decision alone brings you into a place of weightiness. When you come to the place where you realize that your life is not your own and you're in a yielded state, there's such a weightiness that comes with the way you carry the instructions of God and it comes with influence. And from that place of position, I said we're now coming to the place where we have perspective and realize that regardless of the cost of what we're going through, because God is with us, God is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be served. And so we take on that place of saying, they that are with me are more than they that are against me. They that are with me are more than the human that are outside. So you are positioned and then you take on the right perspective. You understand that this is a destiny call. My life is not my own. This is a destiny call. My ministry is not my own. This family I'm building is for God. There's a higher narrative. And then from there, we come into the place of pattern. So we're going to begin to pray. Tonight, I want you to thank God for who you are. I don't know what lies the enemy has told you, but daughter of God, you are chosen of God. I know some of you, I hear God saying, some of you carry scars, and God is saying, I'm able to beautify your life. And so I want you to pray, Lord, I thank you for who I am. I thank you for who you have made me. I thank you for my journey. I want you to thank God because even if you do not understand it, God is working out a plan and a purpose. And say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I do not understand sometimes, but I trust you. I thank you because I know you. I know you. I know in whom I have believed, and I know and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep all that I have committed unto him against that day. Child of God, let's just begin to thank God. Lord, I thank you for who I am. I thank you because who I am is written in your books. Uh, your word says in the volume of your books is written concerning me. I am here to do your will. And so, Lord, I thank you for my identity. Thank you for my journey. Thank you for everything, the ups and downs of my life, because I know that you are not unaware. I know that you are very mindful of me. I know that you are very interested in my life. I know that you are working all things together for good because I love you and I am the called according to your purpose. I trust your pattern. I trust your story. I trust your hand. And I thank you. 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 And I thank you because you can be trusted. I thank you because you can be depended upon. I thank you because you can, I can hold on to your promise. Your promise is what I hold on to. Your promise is faithful. I trust you. I trust your counsel. Your thoughts concerning me are good. I thank you. Your thoughts concerning me are good. I thank you. I am not a slave. I am not a slave. I am planned for. I am your child. I am planned for. I am your child. I am considered in your will. I am considered in your will. I am planned for in your will. There is a plan written concerning me. My identity is secure. Your hand holds me. 
you are holding me in the palm of your hand. You have a counsel concerning my life, and that counsel will stand. And so let's begin to pray. As we thank God for identity, I want you to begin to thank God as well for his purpose for you. The purpose of God for you is good and not evil. You know, the Bible says in the book of Psalm 7, verse 37, that, that the end of a man, to mark the end of a righteous man, his end is good. Well, I like the way he says it in TPT. The TPT version says that my end is glorious. <laughs> now, the God, I want you to thank God for purpose and say, Lord, my end is glorious. My end is glorious. My end is glorious. My end is glorious. My career is ending gloriously. I don't know where you are at at this moment, but there's a glory in front of you. There's a glory that God is saying, I am unveiling your eyes to see. There's a glory that is set before you. There's a glory that is set. Do not settle for less. So we are holding on to the horns of God tonight and declaring there's a glory surrounding my career. There's a glory surrounding my business. My end is glorious. My end is glorious. There's glory set for me. There's glory set for me. I am planned for in God's books. I am considered in God's books. And because I'm considered in God's book, there's joy in my future. There's no sorrow in my future. There's joy waiting for me. My life is planned for. My life is planned for. You know, when you think about it, your children are planned for. So you, 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 you sort out their school fees. They won't come and beg you first. You get the bill. Even if it means that you go without some time, you sort them out. That's how fatherly God is for us. Tonight, I'm going to pray. We're going to pray because I know that we've run out of time. With it. But I want us to pray. And I want you to thank God for the Mordecai in your life. This time we're talking about the physical Mordecai. The Holy Spirit is saying to me to say to someone, some, some of us, we need to go fix the relationship. So you have treated some people that did you right. You have treated them badly. You have not honored some Mordecai that he placed in your life. You have shut some doors which you have opened. And he's breathing over you now and telling you those relationships need to be fixed. I want you to thank God for Mordecai. Thank God for the people. I'm talking about physical people. People that God has placed in your life that are there to give you counsel, that are there to show you and affirm you, that are there to position you for the will of God in your life. Sometimes they're spiritual people. Sometimes they're people that don't even appear to know the Lord. But you recognize that there are these people that God has placed at journeys and junctions of your life. And then if this is you, God is saying to me, to say to you, that some of us need to go fix some of those relationships. You have lost out because you dishonored them or you didn't quite treat the relationship right. And God is saying there's healing. There's healing. You need to go back and fix some of the Mordecai relationships that you have spoiled. Because God is saying in those Mordecai are the directions you need for your positioning. Mordecai is required to position you in the palace. And God has placed all the things you need in that Mordecai person. So God is asking you to let go of pride and fix some of those relationships. Some of you need to just get your act together and make time out to just go and visit that old uncle or that old person that opened the door for you some years ago that you have just one bottle of wine. There's someone you can hear me and you know that it is for you. God is saying you need to go fix that Mordecai relationship that you broke. All right? And so we're going to pray again. We're going to pray for the spiritual Mordecai that is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Bible says that in John chapter 10, my sheep hear my voice. Another man's voice will not hear. I want you to declare in the name of Jesus that as we come into this season, because it's such a chaos season, you cannot afford to be behind. You cannot be ahead of God. You can't be behind God. So you must hear God clearly. Declare that your ears are open. You come into a place of clarity. You hear the Holy Spirit clearly persisting. You're hearing the Holy Spirit clearly per second. You're hearing the Holy Spirit clearly as to what do I do. Declare that the Holy Spirit as your Mordecai will not leave your side. Declare that you have discernment. You know where to go. You know what to do. Declare in the name of Jesus that you are positioned because of the Holy Spirit. You are set in your own palace for your own place of influence. You see, what the Holy Spirit does is not only does he place you in position, he also gives you the right perspective because it's the perspective that brings you into that place of weightiness and influence. You can tell that this is not the end of my journey. So right now, it doesn't appear like there's so much to be grateful for, but God is writing his story. I will not stay down. I will not lose my joy. I will not mourn. I will not choose to mourn like the world mourns. I recognize that God is working out a greater plan. My perspective is to choose it. And so I want you to thank the Holy Spirit for speaking to your heart Thank the Holy Spirit because in this season, your ears are open. I'm hearing God say ideas. He's sending witty inventions. Begin to declare in the name of Jesus that your ears are open for witty inventions. Say, Lord, my ears are open for witty inventions. I receive ideas. I receive ideas for my business. I receive ideas for my career. I receive ideas for my family. God is saying, and I'm hearing this word from someone. What I said to you yesterday, you see, God is saying to say, you need to ask me afresh. Ask me afresh. 
ask me afresh. I sense that there's someone like running here and you are running with a proceeding word. And the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds, not precedes. So God wants you to trust him every day like fresh bread. God, what do you want me to do today? And I sense that there's someone here that's holding on to a word that God gave you some time ago. And God is saying, tick me afresh. Tick me afresh. Early in the morning, rise up and tick me. I want to show you the way to go. I want to give you the proceeding word for your life. All right. We're going to begin to round up in a few seconds. But I want us to pray. I want you there's a sense to which God wants us to pray tonight for witness. I want you to pray for witness in the place of prayer. I want you to pray that the Lord gives you a voice in the spirit. That the Lord gives you a voice in the spirit. You have an authority. Because you see, for us to approach the king on the earth, we must have a voice in the spirit. For us to approach the king and not lose our lives, for us to approach the king and maximize the Kairos moment, it means that we have settled some things in the spirit. And God is saying, my children, my daughters, I want you to come to me and allow me to give you a voice. I want you to come to God and say, Lord, I yield myself. You give me the spirit of prayer and supplication. That's the pattern. There's no other way. The only way we are going to win on the mountains of influence on the earth is because we are going to take the spiritual intelligence from heaven and we are going to superimpose them on the earthly culture. So you are going to say, Holy Spirit of God, I come to you. I ask you, give me witness. Give me stature in the spirit. Give me a voice in the spirit. Give me capacity in the spirit. I want to be able to hold on to heaven. I want to be able to declare the mysteries of heaven on the earth. I want to bring down the mysteries of heaven in my space. I know you don't feel like it's a big space. But for someone here, that's your family home that everybody comes into and just senses the presence of God and feels like they can pour out all their problems and they feel like I get comfort. God is so pleased with you. God is saying to me to say to you, I am pleased with you. Stop looking for this elusive purpose. Just obey me every day. And in rounding up, you know, I want us to thank God. I, I, I sense that God is saying to me to say, I want to renew community. And so I'm speaking again, healing for the person that has gone through church hurt, for the people that are in a place where they don't want to open up. God is saying, I have sent community to you to heal you. And, and the reason I'm sending this community is because like Esther, you need that community to be able to say, come, we are going to pass. Come, we are going to pray. Come, we are going to hold on to God's hand. And God is saying, trust me again. Do not hold me by your past experiences. I am more than able. I am more than able to cause you to be fully ingrained and fully empowered to maximize such a time as this. I want to pray finally. I want to cast out every spirit of fear. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of bondage to fear. Our, our response to the world as it is today should not be fear. Our response will be that response of a person that knows that they are planned for. That knows, you know, the Bible says in the book of Psalm 2 that why do the hidden rage and why do they imagine a vain thing? And the Bible says that he who sits in the heaven shall laugh. You know the reason? If I'm laughing, you know when you're watching a movie and you know how it ends and everybody's worried, you're not worried, you're laughing. You're like, oh, you guys, calm down. It's not that bad. The Bible says that he that sits in heaven laughs. And you know, because we are like God, we must begin to feel like God. So our response cannot be fear. I want us to pray for one minute and just cast down every spirit of fear. Every high thing that is exalting itself against the knowledge of Christ in your life. Everything that's making you afraid of making mistakes. Making you afraid of saying, maybe this turn I'm taking is going to be the worst for my life. Cast it down and say, I cast down every high thing that is exalting itself. Again, the knowledge of Christ in my life, I declare that God has not given me to fear. I receive boldness and I, and I receive a sound mind. From my sound mind, I generate ideas. From my sound mind, I manage influence. From my sound mind, I am a creator and an inventor. I am an inventor and a changer of my time. And, and, and let's just thank the Lord for the answer to our prayer tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for such comfort. Thank you for such encouragement. We bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor T. Bazaka. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Le prosho Can we, guys, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. La prasso kari eke tele gasiwa. Reke keke keke ke li prasso soton de reke de ke 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 de 
Hallelujah. I want to I want to talk about about that very important point about um patterns. Patterns, hallelujah. The pattern of prayer. We've learned so much today. In a few minutes, I want to just come back to it. But we've learned about patterns, the pattern of prayer. Uh, the Bible says that my house shall be called a house of prayer. Jesus Christ said that men always ought to pray and not to faint. Hallelujah. I want you to pray for yourself that you would have a pattern of prayer. People will know that at this time, that person is not available. You are not available because you have a place of prayer. You have your time of prayer. I'm praying for myself, and I want to pray for yourself right now. Lord, help me. The grace, the grace, the grace to establish my pattern of prayer. The grace to be consistent. The grace to be consistent. The Bible says that men always want to pray and trust the in the place of prayer, Amen. 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 Oh my God. Oh my God. What an amazing time. Pastor Elora, before I round up, did you want to give any additional um, points with regards to patterns? Okay, and um, thank you very much, Pastor Tulu. Um, I'll just speak about it because you have given me some more time. Um, so I think that one of the, the, the lies of the enemy today is almost like telling us that it doesn't matter how much you pray. Um, and while God does not want us to be legalistic, to be honest, if you want to know God better, you have to spend time with him. Um, and so um, there was a scripture, I, I will look at it in Philippians, um, it's in the TPT translation. And I'm going to read it because when I, when I, you know, sometimes some of these versions, when we read KJV, it kind of obscures us because you're kind of so accustomed to what you know. So when the scripture says, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, make your request known to God. I'm going to read that scripture in um, in the TPT version, and I'm going to use it to close out like Pastor Tulu asked me to. I want us to know that prayer is non-negotiable. If we're going to excel on the mountain, we are going to have to make prayer what it like becomes our daily bread. Prayer is like your oxygen. The Bible says you pray for manners of prayer. So I'll start first. One of the first things that God taught me is that he told me to preserve my soul. I because even your thoughts are prayer. The Bible says God is able to do far more even abundantly above what you ask or imagine. Your imagination matters. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? If you think about your life, you realize that there are some things that God has done for you that you are not voiced in prayer. And so I'm speaking to you and I'm asking you the first thing to do in this place of patterns is to watch your thoughts life. And that's why the Bible says that we cast down every imagination and every high thing that is exalting itself against the knowledge of Christ. It's your job to cast it down. You must cast it down because you know that even your your your, your thought pattern itself becomes a prayer. Sorry, I'm looking for the scripture in, in Philippians chapter 4. I'm reading now. All right, so that's the first thing. Second one is, stop. like Pastor Tudu said, the pattern of prayer means that just like you say, oh, at 7 p.m. in our house, that's when we have dinner. People that know you know not to call because they know a succeed will not pick the phone. I think that there's something about creating time for God that makes God just feel very welcome in our space. 
we need to create a pattern deliberately so that one, not only can we speak to God, remember we spoke about the place of witness because we hear God and we discern him right. So when you create a pattern of prayer, you create an opportunity to hear God clearly. And hold hands. So I'm, I'm reading the scripture quickly now. It's verse six. So KJV says, don't be anxious for anything, um, but with prayer and supplication, make your request known. The Bible says here, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. It says, be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled request before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Verse seven, then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. So my, my ending request for us is, the Bible says here that we should be saturated in prayer. And that's why when Paul says, pray all manners of prayers, do not stop praying. It's because he recognizes that prayer has different forms. There's active prayer where you must make time. There's prayer where you guard your thoughts and your heart and you're like, I recognize that my thoughts are a prayer. What is going through my mind? What's feeding my spirit? You must, be, you must check because faith comes by hearing, but it also goes by hearing. What am I hearing? What's feeding my spirit? What is feeding my thoughts? Are my thoughts fearful? What's feeding my thoughts? Are my thoughts sending out all sorts of vibes to the spiritual atmosphere that God cannot deal? Hmm. So the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, and I'm just rounding up like Pastor T said, prayer is a saturation. Do you know what it means to be saturated? Saturation point means that you get to the place where you are now in an overflow so that every day you are just prayed up. You're just prayed up. You're just prayed up. You're just prayed up. You're just, you enter your car. When you find a few minutes, you're just blasting tongues. You go into the bathroom in the office. You're blasting the spirit. You have a few minutes at your desk. You are praying under your breath. Nobody knows, but that's where your power comes from. You are going into a meeting. Mm. How dare you go into a meeting where people have held altars? Mm. All those people in that meeting, they have their altars that they speak to. You come with your own fire. Mm. Ah, you come with your own fire. And then sometimes when you go there, you just find out they have nothing to say because the Holy Spirit has shut up their mouth. We can prevail on the earth only by the spirit. So please, if there's anything you take away from me, Pastor T, sorry if I, if I made it too long, but you know, prayer is not a chore. And the enemy has told us these lies as though it's okay, you know, that your toothbrush prayer, but toothbrush prayer cannot overcome mountains. Of that, amen, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, good night. No, that's not where God is calling us. He's calling us to decree things and then call them down on the earth so that he can give us authority over those mountains. So children of God, we are going to pray. We are going to hold on to those patterns. We are going to create communities to pray. Remember like Esther, the pattern of prayer was not just, there's a pattern of prayer for you. There's a corporate pattern of prayer. So you cannot absorb yourself from fellowship. See, let me tell you another lie of the enemy. Isolation is a lie of the enemy. And that's where he's going to finish you. You cannot be isolated in this season because isolation is the easiest way for him to pull you down. So when you pray on your own and create that pattern, you grab a sister, you join the Watchers Connect. We need to pray. When they call a prayer meeting, I'm there. We need to fast. You must make sure that you are in a community where all together, iron is sharpening iron consistently. Trust me, your life will change. You will just find out that you're just walking in. You're walking on sunshine. The heavens will just be beating over you. It's not that you will not have challenges, but nothing will take you by surprise. Hardly. Like you just feel like, okay, this is about to happen. I can sense something. You may not have direction yet, but there's this sense of clarity that comes like he came to Esther. All right, thank you, Pastor T. Thank you so much. Pastor T, you are muted. Hallelujah, Pastor Eloha. You know, you remind me of the scripture when uh, the Queen of Sheba came to see King Solomon. And she said, uh, I had heard about you, but it's a different thing to see. Seeing is believing. Can you guys just begin to express your love, your appreciation? I want to see, I want to see it flowing. I want to see it flowing. I want you to know, tell me that this is a teacher, the teaching anointing. If you attended this meeting, even 10 minutes to the end, you could not have missed the key points. Come on now, let's see the key points. What are the key points? Number one is what? Let me see. Number one is what? Identity. Go on. I'm a, number two. Number two. Thank you. Thank you. I can see them. Yes, purpose. Thank you. Number three. Come on now. Position. Come on now. Number four. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Number four. Number four. No. Obedience. I can see something about obedience. Yes. 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 We, we spoke. Pastor Lord, you were coming so fast. Perspective. 
perspective at a point in time i got okay don't worry you're going to listen to the recording praise the lord you are the apostle of that mountain the mountain place where i i love you pastor i love you i, I love you pastor thank you so much thank you so much whatever mountain you're operating on whether you're in the in the media the business sector in the in even in church hallelujah in the family mm -hmm. sector wherever you are wherever god places you you are bringing that that at your position is for a purpose hallelujah and you're not the, oh mm -hmm. my god there was something i had to hysteric about positioning it's not a privilege to be enjoyed there's something that god has put in you to bring mm -hmm. influence any place we are, we are to subdue, bring influence in any place. Ah, God bless you. Now, I want you to open your mouth and begin to release the, the power of God, the blessings of God upon our, his daughter, upon our sister, Anybody can live here the same. It's all possible. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. You are, you. We'll be here. We, are we are going to invite you again. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> correct? <laughs> ah, we're so blessed. Thank, Thank you so much. That was so awesome. Blessed. That was awesome. Thank if this you. is your first time joining Hello. this company, we are the Watchers Prayer <laughs> Ministry. And like what oh, Allah has said, you need to join a company of praying people. This is one of the expressions of the Watchers Prayer Ministry. We are the Watchers Connect. And our focus is for people who are in business and in career. I have put in two links. One link is um, a WhatsApp um, link. You can connect through there in order to join the Watchers Prayer Ministry. And the second link is, uh, the second link is, the link to join the Watchers Connect. Right now, it, um, it has a banner from the month of March. Just ignore that. Just join the Watchers Connect. So I hope you can all see it for the first time. We welcome you. We appreciate your presence here. Once again, let's put our hands together for Pastor Law. That was awesome. And everybody who attended today's event will definitely get the recording. Um, a couple of hours, amen. Does anybody have anything you want to say before I hand it over to the Gloria? Do you have anything you want to say? You want to ask? Please ask. What's the movement of the window? What's the movement of the window? 
Okay, I guess I need to. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, who, who is speaking? You began to speak, you're muted. Okay, no worries. Sister Gloria, I hand over to you. Thank you, Pastor T. Uh, Thank you, Pastor Eloho. It was worth every minute. Um, you are awesome, humble, and blessed. And I knew it was going to be a blast. Thank God for the grace upon your life. Thank you for what you are doing in the body of Christ. We love and appreciate you. And um, just like Pastor T said, I hope when we call you again in the future, you will answer us. Thank you so much for blessing us today with the word and your prayers. God bless you very really good. So um, our next meeting comes up on the 29th of September and um, bury your other information. Good evening to every one of us and I hope you have a, a nice evening or whatever is remaining in the day. God bless you and see you next month. Bye. God Bye. bless you. Thank Bye. God so bless much. you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Thank you, Pastor Law. Thank you. And Pastor T. Everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Pastor Law. I'm going to let everybody that came through. Thank you, Pastor T. Thank you, Pastor T. Bye. Bye. Bless you. God Everyone to organize this. It's such a blessing. Thank you, Pastor T. Hallelujah. Yes. So blessed, so 